Hi everyone, my name is Ingrid Morales. I hope you are having a good day so far. Um, this video is just a brief explanation on my research and the development of my argument. I want to start off by saying that the first thing we received this semester was a stimulus packet from College Board and it included academic journals, um, it included a piece of art, a video, and excerpts from books. The first ever stimulus source to be read is titled The Cultural Evolutionary Trade-Off of Ritualistic Synchrony. And this, this source was just so informative and so eye-opening to read because when I think of synchrony, I think of the military. That's the first thing that comes up to mind. It's, you know, they, their same uniforms, the accepted behavior, the accepted vocabulary, how they're very easily recognized and how they can accomplish many things. Um, but this article touched on the positive consequences of synchrony, but it also really focused on the negative consequences of synchrony. Um, how synchrony can decrease creativity and it can increase compliance in its members to follow ideas and activities that they don't necessarily agree with. Um, I took time to read carefully each, each source that I had, to annotate, to highlight certain parts, to make notes, just to make sure that I had a thorough understanding of the sources before going into writing my IWA. Actually, our teacher gave us this fantastic organizer to fill in and it had all of our sources in one place and the title of the books and the authors of said sources and it was just it made writing the IWA so much easier because we could reference that one document that had everything on it. Um, some of the references were really great to read, really fast reads, um, like the Synchrony article. Um, but the second source that I chose for my for my research was published by the Developmental Cognitive Neuroscience, and it. And this the source really speaks about you know peers and and family members and what who impacts a student more often who who influences them more often and what it found is that actually sixty five percent of the time as as teenagers we we stay with our opinion um, I may ask peers or I may ask my parents or my family members and I may agree with them but that doesn't necessarily mean that they influenced my decision. Um, and this article and the synchrony one really made me think of, you know, peer pressure and how important peer pressure is because I think, you know, for people my age, one of the things our parents say the most or adults say the most is, well, if your parents, if your friends jump off a bridge, well, are you going to jump off a bridge? And I wanted to know, well, how many of us would actually, you know, jump that bridge with them? Um, but it wasn't until I saw the art piece, The Holdout by Norman Rockwell, in which there is a woman sitting in the middle of the room, and these men around her, and they look very angry that I thought, well, how many of those men are actually angry and how many of those men are angry just so they can fit in with the rest of the group? Um, so that, that's where violence kind of came in. And um, it also came in when I was looking at, when my peers and I were talking about school shootings and violence in, in, in high schools and gang fights and everything. And I looked it up and I found that roughly 60 percent of American high school students report being in physically violent fights and although this is a small number you really have to think about how many high schools there are nationwide and how many of those high school you know how many students each high school has and and when I actually did the math I found that that 16 percent of high school students is as about the same as the population of Kansas which means you have a whole state of students who have been in physically violent fights. So it was clearly a big issue and I was really interested in finding more about this. Um, so I tried to find a way to connect those three sources from the stimulus packet as well as this statistic. Um, I obviously, I wanted to find something that I was passionate about. I wanted to find something that I wanted to know more about because I knew that if I wanted to argue something, it had to be something I was passionate about because I was gonna put hours and hours of work and research and development into this 2000 word essay and I needed, I needed to be interested in it so I could continue it every day. Um, initially, my, my direction for this research was about peers and the impacts peers have. Um, and there was so much literature on this topic, you know, there were so many academic journals and magazines and videos and just so much literature on this topic. Um, However, I made this unexpected discovery which kind of shifted the direction of my research and it was when I found other factors such as um, mental health disorders, um, parents, environments, schools, teachers, really other factors that encouraged it and it was something that is not spoken a lot of about, you know, there's not many research on it, not everyone speaks about it, mainly people focus on peers and 
I thought, well, why shouldn't I focus on other factors? Um, obviously, with mental health disorders, one of the main mental health disorders that came up was depression. And I thought to myself, well, depression, you know, it makes a student feel sad. Why, why would they use violence for that? Um, but in my, in my articles and my sources, I found that when someone has depression, they feel very lonely and they feel like the world is against them. And sometimes they resort to violence as a coping mechanism. Um, and that was just, it was so sad to read, but so informative. And I wanted more people to know about this issue. Um, with parents and prenatal care, I was, it was something that we don't really think about, you know. But it's something that's talked about a lot. You know, what happens in your childhood that makes you violent in the future? What happens, what, what events in your childhood impact you so much that when you're in high school or in college, you become a violent, you become a violent person and you resort to violence to cope. Um, so I was very interested to research that. As for the environment, of course, uh, there was an article that focused on, you know, lead exposure in males and how it could increase violence, you know. And lead exposure can come from the air supply or from water intake and it can just increase a male um, like and becoming violent uh, but I also mainly focused on the school environment because we when we really think about it we are in school for 13 to 12 12 to 13 years um, five days a week eight hours a day and you know what happens in school what happens that can really affect you so much that can make you become a violent student because violent students don't just you know, one day I'm not violent and the next day I'm violent. No, there are many things and many factors that go into creating that violent student, encouraging those violent behaviors. Um, so that is that is how my research came to be. That is how my argument got developed. And um, I really hope that through my PowerPoint and through my presentation, you can see like the importance of this issue, the importance of looking at the factors other than peer pressure and addressing said factors so that we can decrease the percent of students who are exposed to violence in their in their education through their educational career um so yeah i just this was my explanation thank you so much for watching this video i hope it gave you some insight on on my presentation and my research and have a great rest of your day